there's a fundamental change occurring in the world of technology. A new type of computer that's arriving in the unusual form of a coffee table. This past March, Microsoft invited popular mechanics to the company's Redmond, Washington campus for a first look at a top secret project codenamed Milan. It is the first of its kind uh, in that it is a new paradigm in computing. It's called surface computing. This type of interface works especially well for photo sharing, maps, and menus, where browsing on a traditional screen pales in comparison to the detailed hands-on manipulation people are used to with paper. You can do things like organize your photos, drag them around and resize them, and play with them as if they were real photos, real printed photos. And here we even have a little video. Surface computing utilizes multi-touch technology, which is a multi-finger, multi-user interface that has it's been bouncing around the world of computer science it since the 1980s. A, this is a multi-touch uh, input device, and multi-touch, uh, which generally means multi-point input devices, are about allowing more than one input uh, to be processed at a time. NYU computer scientist Jeff Hahn builds huge multi-touch displays for corporate and military clients through his company, Perceptive Pixel. In fact, multi-touch is swiftly becoming the hot interface for electronic devices. Multi-touch, first of all, allows for direct manipulation. It means you're actually contacting not through an intermediary, but actually on the graphics itself. It's a direct manipulation interface. Two, it means that I can do more than one point in time. I can actually use two or three, which means I can manipulate more things at a time. With a mouse, you can only manipulate one or two things at a time. But where Microsoft Surface Computer truly gets mind-blowing is how it interacts with other devices. The Surface computer uses a series of infrared cameras to literally see what is on its tabletop. What we're able to do is also have interaction with objects on the surface. So when we place an object on the surface, the cameras can recognize what that object is and allow us to interact directly with that object that we've just placed on the surface. We see this as a whole new category, a complete new ecosystem for computers. Here we have a wireless camera and a lot of wireless uh, functionality is built into the, the Surface computing platform and it's evolving into, into devices such as this camera. So here we're going to take a picture of uh, my colleague Eric Softy. And we can then just put the camera right on the uh, right on the device and use that picture, which is I think enormously flattering of our friend Incredibly Eric Softy. Great angle. <laughs> and, and really, really <laughs> blow it up for maximum <laughs> embarrassment. We have a cell phone, and all the wireless linking is going on behind the scenes in the table. So you can take your photo and then just instantly put it on your wireless device and then take it with you. Now you've basically taken two devices and without having to plug them into a computer or sync them up, you've transferred content from one to the other. Although Surface Computing may eventually find a place in the home, Microsoft initially plans to sell the devices to commercial partners such as T-Mobile, Harris Casinos, and Starwood Hotels. The $5,000 to $10,000 machines will start showing up in local retail stores as early as the end of 2007. But where is all of this leading? Computer scientists see a near future of ubiquitous computing, where people are surrounded by intelligent surfaces. Maybe the surface of your kitchen table, or it can be in front of your television and it can help you to control your, your, uh, your television kind of as, an, as the ultimate unlosable remote control. Eventually, of course, this will trickle down, and I do, I am very positive, and uh, I firmly believe that this kind of thing will be in that near future where we have wallpaper displays in every hallway, every desk, every surface starts to become an interface of a computer, and in order for that to happen, we need interfaces like this. You